Hello everyone. Welcome to our Integrated Learning Center. This presentation is done by Edras Minhagos, Sean Lanza, and myself, Maylin Wagner. Overview. The overview of the presentation are the types of curriculum as follows. Firstly, curriculum philosophy, followed by curriculum theory, which includes the founders of, of the curriculums by Mr. Tyler and Taba. After that, the curriculum integration, and we will be doing also the curriculum of evaluation. Okay, in this presentation, we're going to go over seven types of curriculum and their classroom implications. So the first one is the recommended curriculum. Perhaps you have asked these questions. Why should I take all these subjects and follow the course flow religiously? Why is there a need to implement the primary education and secondary education curriculum? Well, the answer is simple. The Ministry of Education or any professional organization that can recommend and implement a curriculum. In Belize, for example, the recommended curriculum being implemented is by the Ministry of Education. In some cases, a lawmaking body or a university or a school can be recommended a subject, a course or any academic program which is deemed necessary for national identity and security, for environmental protection and sustainable development among others. The second uh, curriculum type is the written curriculum. And this refers to a lesson plan or syllabus written by teachers. Another example is the one written by curriculum experts with the help of subject teachers. This kind of written curriculum needs to be pilot tested or tried out in sample schools to determine its effectiveness. Thirdly, there's the supported curriculum. Instructional materials such as textbooks, audiovisual materials, blogs, wikis, and other and other are examples of support curriculum. Other examples are playgrounds, zoos, gardens, muse museums, and real life objects. It is called supported curriculum because it, it helps teachers to implement a written curriculum, thus enables the students to become lifelong learners. Uh, the fourth type is the taught curriculum. This is about the implementation of the written curriculum. Whatever is being taught, or an activity being done in the classroom is a taught curriculum. So, when teachers give a lecture, initiate a group work, or ask students to do a laboratory experiment with their guidance, the taught curriculum is demonstrated. This curriculum contains different teaching styles and learning styles to address the students' needs and interests. The fifth type is the tested curriculum. When students take a quiz or the midterm and final exams, these series of evaluations are the so-called assessed curriculum. Teachers may use the pencil and paper tests and authentic assessments like portfolio and performance-based assessments in order to know if the students are progressing or not. The sixth type is the learned curriculum. This type of curriculum indicates what the students have actually learned. This can be measured through learning outcomes a learning outcome can be manifested by what students can perform or do either in their cognitive, affective, or psycho psychomotor domains. The learning outcome can be determined by the results of the test, and it can be achieved by the students through the use of learning objective. And finally, there is the hidden curriculum. Well, this just basically refers to the unplanned or unintended curriculum, but plays an important role in learning. Now, I will pass it on to my colleague. Curriculum philosophy. This method is usually a child center. Reason why is a child center is because it helps children by assisting them to develop their individual abilities and potential. 
method was founded especially on the concept of educating the whole child. This method also provides social emotional, emotional and physical as well as cognitive development for a child. In each classroom that we enter, we may find reason why is this done and why is it taught in each classroom. In other words, curriculum is something that is teach in all different schools and all classes. Philosophy may, all, may not only be done in a classroom, but sometimes philosophy is also used as, as ourselves as educators to deliver. Curriculum theory. There are two types of curriculum theory. The first one is by tab, the TABA model. Uh, this TABA model was developed in the 1902 and 1967 by Ilda TABA. She was an architect and also a curriculum theorist. And also she was a former reformer educator. She was born in a small village of Kuraste. And Taba, she believed that there was to be a defined order in creating a curriculum. Taba also developed a model of learning. This model that she developed was to enhance the thinking skill of students. Tava believed that there must be a process for evaluating students' achievement on content after the content standard have been established and implemented. The main concept of this approach to the curriculum development is that the teacher must be involved in the development of the curriculum. In the other side, as you notice, we have Tyler model. The Tyler model, model was developed in 1902 and 1994. It, it was, he published more than 700 articles and 16 books. Some of these are best known as the basic principle of curriculum and instruction, which is based on an eight year study. Tyler position, he believed that the the problem with education is that educational programs are lack unmistakable and of defined purposes. And by the way, that's one of the titles of one of his books. In this books, we, we can find that very dynamic um, programs that are under a constant evaluation and revision. Curriculum has always been taught of a static set of program. His work emphasized main, mainly in evaluation, keeping the basic principle of curriculum and instructions that are relevant, trusted, Teach. The Tyler model is also one of the best known models for the curriculum development. 
known for the special attention it gives to the planning phases deductive for its process from the general exam examining the needs of society for example to the specific in another words specifying instructional objectives tyler recommended that curriculum planner identify general objectives by gathering data from three sources one the learner two contemporary contemporary life outside the school, three, subject matter. After identifying numerous general objectives, the planner will find them by filtering them through two screens, philosophical screen and the psychological screen. The Tyler model general objective is to successfully pass through the two screens that it, that it has become more popular known as the instructional objective. Curriculum objective indicates what behavior to be developed in a content to be applied. If we take a look now, we are finding the Tyler versus Taba. Some of the differences are, in Tyler's model, it's deductive. In Taba's model, it's inductive. Tyler's model, he argues from the view of being an administrator, administrator, in another words, from an administrator approach, while Taba, she reflects as a teacher approach. Tyler believed that administration should design the curriculum and the teachers should implement it. Taba model, she, she believed that teachers are aware of the students' need, hence teachers should be the one to develop the curriculum and implement it in practice. As I mentioned earlier, Tyler main focus stresses and aims to evalu evaluating students and for the teacher to have the control. In the Tabas model, she was more rational. because her work does not start with an objective, but she believed rather that education should demand, should be demanded in a particular society. And education should be always first. As we see in Tyler's approach, it may be perfect for market-oriented education, but very in, inadequate for the development of responsibility and creativity in the individuals to meet challenges of constantly changing circumstances. In the TABA model, we can notice that the main attention is to select the content and organize it with the aim to provide students with an opportunity to learn with comprehension. I will now pass on to my next colleague. Okay, so um, in innovative, uh, in the integrated curriculum, innovative educators concerned with improving student achievement seek ways to create rigorous, relevant, and engaging curriculum. One way is by curriculum integration. So what exactly is an integrated curriculum? In its simplest conception, 
it is about making connections in different areas of study by cutting across subject matter lines and emphasizing unifying concepts. Integration uh, basically focuses on making connections for students, allowing them to engage in relevant, meaningful activities that can be connected to real life. There are different approaches to cur curriculum integration, and these include multidisciplinary approach, the interdisciplinary approach, and the transdisciplinary approach. Uh, with the multidisciplinary integration, the multidisciplinary approaches focus primar primarily on the disciplines. Teachers who use this approach organize standards from the disciplines around a team. Uh, the figure on the previous slide, uh, that shows the relationship of different subjects to each other and to a common team. There are many different ways to create multidisciplinary curriculum and they tend to differ in the level of intensity of the integration effort. Interdi interdisciplinary integration, well, in this approach to integration, teachers organize the curriculum around common learning across disciplines. They chunk together the common learnings embedded in the disciplines to emphasize interdisciplinary skills and concepts. The disciplines are identifiable, but they assume less importance than in the multidisciplinary multi approach. Now, with the transdisciplinary integration, in this approach to integration, teachers organize curriculum around student questions and concerns. Students develop life skills as they apply interdisciplinary and disciplinary skills in a real life context. Two routes lead to transdisciplinary, transdisciplinary integration, which are the project based learning and negotiating the curriculum. I will now pass it on to my colleague. Okay, curriculum evaluation, the process of assessing the degree of achievement of education, objective teaching, learning process, and testing situation. It helps teachers judge whether a curriculum is instructional approach or implemented implementation of planning. Basically saying that um, in an institution, there are teachers that use or use methods such as curriculums, and one of them is evaluation. Evaluation helps teachers to have a record of the weakness and strengths within the student, and so they try to fix the errors and find better ways in having a better teaching. So they will do evaluations on teachers as well and on the student, depending if the teaching is going great, then they continue with the process. If the evaluation is low, then they would try to find better methods, ways, so that the teaching could be more effective, so that they can reach to the aim, or to the goal that the institution or the, the teaching is required. So in concluding, we want to recommend for the curriculum of Belize as follows. In first place, we want to have a specific goal for the area of teaching. So you want to have a goal at EM so that when you go and teach, you go direct, you, you have that in mind that mindset of what you're going to do. Second, we want to access or find ways to transfer the information from teachers to students. So if the student is not getting the necessary information from the teacher, then they would te the teacher would have to know and identify 
And once the teacher identifies, the teacher will have to find another way, another method, so that the student could have that in interaction and understand. So it's good to find better ways, all right? We also recommend to find learning principles, which will help the student to understand better. Basically, like whenever you are teaching a class, you can experience an, an, ex, an experiment on your students and know what, what methods are good, what methods are not really good, and then you can always change them around. Also, we want to recommend to use effective curriculums that depending on the content, because sometimes there are larger contents, some contents are very long and, and they have a lot of content. So what you want to do is to find or use a curriculum that is specified for you to teach the best one and try to minimize the content. All right. Also, we want to recommend to evaluate evaluation, as we said previously, evaluate teachers and students. All right. So that you can find the weakness and strengths. We also want to recommend to have um, participation. All right. You want to make sure you, your students participate individually and in groups so that you can find the weaknesses and strengths. Also promote more frequent opportunities for teachers. For some teachers, they are new and they would want to have more experience, more ideas. So what the institution would want to do in Belize and in the curriculum area is to promote teachers to more seven days, to more workshops and seminars so they can have more ideas to come back and try to teach new ideas to students, to their students. All right, to have an effective and efficient teaching for the EM or the goal to be accomplished. Following are our references or some of our information. And also we want to thank you everyone for listening and your cooperation with our presentation. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.